The exhibition that Anne went to was, I guess, a state fair of sorts. Um, province fair, because, you know, Canada has provinces instead of states. Um, but the county fair is much the same thing. And what it is, it's a show of local uh, products. Uh, usually it's foodstuffs that people make. So, you know, people enter pies, people enter cakes, people enter jams and jellies, uh, people enter livestock. So you have livestock presented and it gets judged based on its size and its form and how well it looks. Um, people enter quilts, people enter, people enter all sorts of handmade goods. They mentioned that uh, Josie Pye won for a knitted lace veil. That's the type of thing that you typically see, or typically saw back then. You see it now still. But now you have things like photography, where people, you know, take photos and enter them. And my son, our, your dad, won, won a Best of Show award for a photograph years and years ago at the Clearfield County Fair. And, you know, this is the same sort of thing. And she spent two days at the this exhibition and it was 30 miles away, which nowadays 30 miles is just there. You know, you get in the car, you drive half an hour, you're there. But back in this time, you're going at the pace of a horse, which is like five, 10 miles an hour. So at five miles an hour, at five miles an hour, 30 miles is six hours. So six hours there, six hours back, that's 12 hours. This is sometime in September, which means it's right around the equinox, which means 12 hours is all the sunlight that you have. There's 12 hours of daylight at the equinox. And if this were after the equinox, it gets really dark really fast that far north. So they had their 12 hours of daylight and gets up early, dashes across. They get to Charlottetown at noon. Meet Miss Barry. And then the dad goes back. And then two days later, he repeats the thing. And so he has like, they're leaving when it's almost dark. They're leaving when it's dark. They're getting home when it's dark. You know, I talked about getting home at sunset. So this is an all-day trip to go 30 miles. Um, so, you know, it's an all-day trip to go 30 miles to this exhibition. And they bump into a bunch of people from Avonlea there, which is cool. You know, a bunch of friends, a bunch of neighbors. Some of their neighbors win. The pastor won for Pig. And, and it's just like... Or I guess, uh, I guess Diana was the one who was surprised. It's like, I can't believe he won for a pig. And and it's like, he's got to do something, you know, if he raises pigs, why can't he just raise good ones? You know, so he won for a pig. And so, you know, whole big exhibition and Anne loves it. And she got asked by Miss Barry. So do you prefer to live in the city or the country. And Anne decided that she preferred the country that, you know, it's nice having ice cream at 11 o'clock at night. And let me say that is a wonderful thing being able to just get up and have ice cream at 11. But Anne was like, you know, I like the stability of being at home. I like lying in bed and sleeping and knowing the stars are up. And so this may be a sign of where they end up. Now, Anne went to a fortune teller and the fortune teller is like, you're going to marry a dark man and go across the water. Now, fortune tellers are notoriously vague because if you are vague, then people will read into your fortune telling that read into the fortune that you give them that, yes, this is what I am. So there was a study done years ago where they had a paragraph and it made a bunch of vague generalizations describing hard work and determination. And 
mostly successful outcomes, but some struggles and triumphs and some difficulties and the occasional setback by not doing everything that you intended to do. And it, it was just all wishy-washy. And they presented this to people and they said, okay, what's your astrological sign? What's your star sign? Oh, I'm a Sagittarius. And so they read off the paragraph. And the person was like, wow, that is so me. And someone else, what are you? I'm a Libra. And read off the paragraph. Oh, that is so me. Scorpio, Virgo, that is so me. Everybody. Didn't matter. Everyone read it as being them. So that is the trick to fortune telling. Or that's a very basic. That is the that is entry level fortune telling. And then there's something called a cold read, where you look at people's reactions to things. So, you know, you look at people's reactions to things. If their eyes lift, if they look this way, if they look that way slight head tilts and if their eyes open up that means you're going in the right direction you keep following it and if they turn their head sideways you go in a different path and so the idea is is that you read what they're thinking and then you just kind of use that to guide the fortune and then people believe that and there are people who spend lots and lots of money on fortune tellers to tell them things that they want to hear. And it's really kind of tragic because a lot of the people who spend the money don't have the money to spend. You know, a millionaire blows $10,000 on a fortune teller. Okay. But, you know, if someone who makes barely enough money to live on, you know, someone who's just scraping by living paycheck to paycheck blows 50 bucks on a card reading that tells them what they want to hear. I would rather that they spent that on a nice meal or paying their phone bill or, you know, things like that, because I don't know. There's a lot of hucksters in the fortune telling business, a whole, whole lot of them. And there are some who don't even know that they're lying, which, yeah, beware of that one too. Um, there are people out there who convince themselves, but mm, yeah, they, they don't realize that they don't realize that all they're doing is pattern matching and feeding off of other people's emotions. because, you know, it's like, oh, you're such a great fortune teller. Well, no, you just happen to accidentally read the other person's emotions and follow their guidance. Um, which is, yeah, this is one of those, one of those weird things, but the exhibition was great. And Diana wanted to live in the city. So maybe Diana will end up moving away out of Avonlea, which she grows up. I mean, the girls are only 14 now, so they still have some growing to do. They still have some learning to do. And, um, but Anne looks like she's going to be in Avonlea for a while. Spoiler alert. There's a sequel, Anne of Avonlea. So she probably will.